Hello everyone, good day to you. Welcome to my space and congratulations for coming to the end of the year. We are the last month. God has been faithful and we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, we celebrate him at various points in the year anyway. But this time is more secluded to when we remember his actual birth and it gives us the opportunity to evangelize and remind people of the true reason for this season not really a time for spending and overspending and going into debt because of all that but here is the first reason and then as a result of that, we share the love of God, and it does involve giving, but yes, not to the point of getting silly about it. So thank God that we are at this time of the year. We have a few days left. We believe that the hand of God, and I pray that actually protection will be on you all, on every one of us to finish strong and come up with some decisions for some that are having a time of rest. Maybe you've had your annual leave, you're enjoying it now. You've taken time off work. If you're self-employed, you've closed for the year and you're having some time of reflection and maybe planning for the activities of the new year. I hope that what I'm going to share here would help you make some vital decisions that would ensure that you make less mistakes in the new year. So I've titled this, Do Not Trust in Yourself. Growing up, we used to say or make phrases like, I trust myself not to do this. I trust myself not to do that. Or I know myself very well. I will not do this. And it was all about I, me, and all that self-confidence, which is not bad. But what I'm, what I'm about to share is slightly different and will take us away from trusting in ourselves that much. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says that our sufficiency is of God. To operate in the supernatural, we must be aware that we are insufficient in ourselves. With our first class and masters and PhDs is good, excellent. But if this makes us think that we are sufficient in ourselves, then we can't operate in the higher realms of authority and excellence that God has for us, which is beyond our natural best. But when we realize that we are not that much of ourselves, then we would be positioning ourselves to receive the enablement from the highest. Have you seen people with a power bank for their devices like laptops and mobile and that? That's because they've discovered that their system's battery isn't sufficient to deliver optimally for long hours so they needed the power bank so we are the life that we receive when we become or became born again is so vast that we need god's help by the power of the holy spirit to enable us to know understand and put that life and everything that entails or everything that is involved to work and be that best that God plans for us, planned for us to be. We cannot trust our intelligence as the as the guide of our life. The apostles were not significant because they had high titles, but the great grace that was on them was what they relied on. In the body of Christ, Grace distinguishes us. Grace can only be given from above. And as soon as you realize that you press in for it, you seek him with all your heart, you put your time into it and seek wisdom from him. But it first starts 
with you realizing this that we can't do it by ourselves and it will take time it will take discipline it will take us to make up our minds and be consistent at seeking him when the lord tells you that he's made you this person and he will use you to do this work and the other he's not looking at the present you he's looking at his ability that will work in you when you allow him see that's another thing so you come to realize it you know but you've got to give him the allowance each time and you do that in prayer and calling and asking stop considering your history or family background which might not be a factor for your success when god wants to help you he'll present you with a situation that will show how inadequate you are that's why he wants to read you of the mindset of I can, me, myself, and that. Only he can bring the light from the dark and bring life from death, hope from disaster. God wants to tell a story through yours and my life so that when the world thinks you're a write-off, you're no good, or Satan believes he's gotten you, they suddenly see you rise with brightness. The treasure in the earth, earthen vessel that God's word talks about begins to show forth, which is the excellency of God's power working through us. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Paul said, we are pressed on every side, but not destroyed. We are cast down, but not forsaken. The devil or the world doesn't fully understand the force that's driving our lives. So they don't know how far to push or even what to do in an attempt to break and destroy us. So when we are pushed and pressed on every side, it is good. It's a good thing sometimes because it means we press him further into God. And the word of God says in Isaiah that he is never weary there is no searching of his understanding he gives power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength so even though the youth can faint and they are meant to faint when and, and get weary when they walk and run and do all those tiresome work the young men shall fail according to the word but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall walk and not be weary and what enables them to do that, to walk and not be weary, is grace, obtaining grace. So like I referred to before, when the enemy would have thrown, he has a list of things. He's so experienced, remember? He's, he has this list of devices and activities and things to throw at the believer. And he don't, they don't understand how far they can go. They can push and press before they get you. But you that is pressed into God, you're not living for yourself. You're saying, you know what, I've got eyes, but I don't rely on those eyes or vision. My ability to see and navigate is by the Holy Spirit. So when the enemy has thrown all his darts and he sees that they keep falling, and sometimes it seems like you're gotten, you've been gotten on, or, and you're down there, they see you spring for you rise up. That grace and the earthen vessel inside of you is working. Glory to God for that ability. That grace and the treasure in the earthen vessel. Hallelujah. And the workings of the Holy Spirit and all this provision that God has in place for us, you see. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. For we would not want you, so this is Paul talking, for we would not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. This was Paul's testimony. A fallen man will not submit to God, it's been so since Adam rebelled, and that's why repentance is being preached to those that had relationships with God, like the Jews, 
and a complete salvation for the Gentiles because they didn't have any relationship with God from the beginning. So if you find a person who submits to God, that submission is being made possible because God has had a better, a better part of them. Paul was so despaired of life that he prayed to die. Have you ever experienced such pressure? I know I have, several, well, not several times, maybe once or twice. In my journeys with God, going through trainings and the school of the Spirit, some of us sometimes thought that thought and considered that the option of being here wasn't pleasant anymore. Then Paul added from what we read that they didn't go through all of that pressure because God wanted them dead. But God allowed it so that they learned not to trust in themselves, but to trust in God that raises one from a seemingly dead situation. And that's what we came to learn as well in our own journey. So when you have an essential agenda from God, a valid destiny to fulfill you, you will go through some of those pressure-packed processes. Its intention is to stretch you to the point where you see that your wisdom and understanding are not enough. Your intelligence is futile. It's not meant to shame you, really. Those experiences are not meant to shame you. But to get you to the point where you do not trust in yourself but in the Lord. So don't run away from God's hand of discipline or training. You can start now and make up your mind to abandon yourself in him. Let him know you cannot do it by your intelligence or by yourself. You need him. And you know, I'll share more about some practical areas we have experienced this. But before I get to that, I just wanted to say, I just want to say that when I went through certain experiences and I thought, this is this meant to shame me? That was my initial thought. Before I started to find out what the Holy Spirit was teaching me, I thought, these mistakes I'm making, people will just see that what a waste of money. You know, we are paying this person and if she's going to come up with this sort of result, then are we, should we reevaluate on that? Uh, though it didn't get to the point, but I thought if they were to see this work in this current state, that's what they would think. And why is this meant to shame me and open me that, you know, I'm inadequate in this area or that. But no, God was trying to get my attention to rely on him for that help. So, you know, the ones that haven't been to the school of the spirit by, you know them by their words. They boast about their degrees, their doctorate, and how they are the most elite in their area and all and you know what i'll say to them well done because you've invested time monies and you've gotten those high degrees and that well done but demons don't know you life is spiritual if 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 you were to get if demons were to get on your case or you get to situations beyond the physical your control and you cry out you might not even survive the blow and the attacks of evil spirits. But the ones that, to, that, that have been and still being trained in the school of the Spirit by the Lord have learned to aban abandon themselves on God. When you are pressured on every side, sometimes you feel weak. And in that state, when you call the name of Jesus, he shows up for you because you have made him your ability. And life comes out of the ashes of death. I have shared testimonies of personal experiences on my page. If you look through, you'll see and, and hear me testify in this area what I've just mentioned. I've heard testimonies from far and near as well when people with similar orientations find themselves in the most disadvantaged situation, they've been alone and darkness threatened to close in, all they said was Jesus. Or 
we've used all the principles of victory that he's taught us and the holy spirit taught us and you know through men of god as well teachers and that and the elements of darkness took off people in this group have learned to make god their sufficiency and as we keep proving it again and again you know that we remain grounded we remain we keep getting deeper because we know that this is the way we've proved it over and over again that's what i'm bringing to you so i'm going to give an example in the area of my work or my career a few years ago after coming out of one of the schools of the spirit in a, in my in my field according to the ways and the standard of working i was going to struggle to get back on my feet then the holy spirit said something beyond profound he said he has made me number one in my field not say in a company i'm making number one he said in fact in the whole location i've made you number one in this field and this was the opposite of life's expectation after i came out of that training phase so on hearing this as as to be expected i was excited i got eh, like a child in a candy shop on that but still i didn't know what it entailed to display that level of excellence and productivity where my output would be so good that it wouldn't require correction i remember being um, learning under pastor chris for many years he used to say to us, I think there was a message that he taught on excellence many, many years ago when I learned that. And in that message, he said, was it that message or maybe another one where he said, learn or grow to the, grow to the point where you do the right things the, the first time. That is it, yeah. <laughs> it just came to mind now. And so that was the point, and I thought, you know, how... By what the Holy Spirit said, he's saying that I'll get to the point where my output, my output would be so good, it wouldn't require correction, and I'll get things right the first time. So I thought, well, I have some experience, some years of experience in this field, so maybe that's what the Lord would use to make me number one. I thought to myself that when presented with a task, I knew what was expected of me. I knew what steps to take, and if I keep brushing up now and again, and again through online pieces of trainings, I'll be all right, you know. But <laughs> I staggered sometimes during those times of um, tasks being presented to me. I said within myself at some point, or few points, I said, Lord, this what I'm doing is not the product of one that's meant to be the best or number one in this field. So I learned firstly by some experiences before I heard it taught. So I'll give a bit, a bit of a background of what I do. My role involves learning the problem within an industry a business an organization and then recommend solutions or sometimes they'll present to me what the problem is and what they think the solution should be and it's my duty to analyze what they've said find out the root cause of that problem and see whether the prob the solution that they have recommended is the ideal solution to solve that problem and keep it on going for a long time, you know. And that, so that's my role. So after building, and again, after I've recommended the solution and done all that work, after building the software solutions, I would also support with training documents. And it's easy for you to produce this these documents or materials because you've worked on that task on that project from start to finish you you understand it back to to front so with some tasks i managed to do well but with some others 
And again, this is after coming out of that training session with the Holy Spirit, not before. So on some others, I would struggle for a bit. So in those struggle phases, I found that when I spoke in tongues, this was something I stumbled on. I found that when I spoke in tongues for a while and asked the Lord to help me because I couldn't do it, suddenly a window of understanding would open, definitely beyond me, and I'll find myself working things and completing my work in a couple of days when it should typically have taken a week or two. I know when I look at it after, I'll say for a fact that that was not me. So I got so happy, excited about it. I shared it with people. I wanted them to see the new way of working that I was stumbling on. And I wanted them to do the same. I didn't want to keep this, what I thought, maybe a big secret to myself. It, there's joy in sharing. It's, love, it's lovely to share, isn't it? But I didn't do this. I didn't take this step all the time. It was like, like I said, I stumbled upon it. It hadn't become a revelation yet. Then I heard Apostle Romeo talk about it. And he used himself as an example. He said the same terms of stammering which he was born with were still there. And he labored, or he would labor in prayers for hours to gain the stamina or ability to deliver the words the Lord would give him for each program. And after the laboring in prayer, he'll come out. If you've heard him, you'll hear how excellently he speaks in delivering those messages. So he's proved it. It works. So I thought, uh -huh. That was the that was what the Holy Spirit was trying to teach me. I'd seen the difference between when I did this and followed that process of you know asking and waiting on the Lord and traveling and that. So I, when I sought His support, I saw the difference in my work from when I didn't. And He was trying to make me understand that this is what he meant that i'll be number one if i follow this process my goodness so hearing the man of god say that it was i think that was when the revelation stuck so i'll give an example one time i was asked to create a training document like a user guide for our external users our customers now when you're asked to do such a document for internal use only it's a bit easy to do but when this is for external consum consumption you want to be doubly careful especially when it's going out to tens of thousands of users and they'll use hang on and they'll use it uh, time and time and again and it, it will just keep going out there there, there really isn't room for mistakes this and also the time that the, the task was allocated to me there was no time that it didn't leave any room for other sets of eyes to modify maybe another set of a group of professionals to look through and perfect say the language here and besides if you're in a position me within the managerial um position the company shouldn't have to pay someone else to brush up on your work. So when you say it is done, they expect to review it among other senior management, not because they want to change it or they, and that they just want to see the quality of your work. And then after that, attach it to the software product, then notify or send it to, to the users the customers. So in this case, I had a t tight deadline and I didn't work on the product end to end. It's easy when you were part of the team in discussing the initiative, it gets approved and you start working on everything from the start. They can wake you up from sleep and ask you questions about it and you're easy to give answers. But when I wasn't part of the team like that and then you're asked to do something, it, you need, first of all, time. 
to study what the product is about before starting to document a user guide or other important accompanying product documentation. And then when you have the pressure of time, it takes it to a whole new level. So I did the wise thing. I'd gotten the revelation at this point, and I had determined that I was not going to do it only as an one off or of an own experience. I was going to follow that process. So I cried out. I said, dear Lord, dear Holy Spirit, I need you. Please help me. Show me how to do this. Please show me what to do. Where do I start? How do I flow with the user journey in ETC? And he did. Oh, he did. Within the quickest time as well. My like, was it what? Two, three days? Afterward, he said for me to share it with a certain head of department for a quick feedback. I did. And, you know, they returned and said it was very good. No changes or corrections required. I then completed all that work, all that documentation, and shipped them all to senior management. And truly, not a feedback of change was returned. Only thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was so happy for days. I kept saying, Lord, it was you. Dear Holy Spirit of God, I didn't do this alone. The work was excellent. That is one of many examples. So I urge and I encourage you, make up your minds as we step into the new year to be totally reliant on the Holy Spirit, not only for faith-related matters, but every single aspect of our life. Do not trust in yourself. I'll stop here for now. I hope this has blessed you. You can listen again and start practicing it even from the remainder part of this year and into the new year. And you'll come up number one. You'll come up excellent. You'll come up with amazing results. you get things right the first time. Put in the work from the start with the Holy Spirit so that you're not having to repeat and repeat. And you know what that does to you? It knocks your confidence. When you're going into a fresh task, project, or whatever your work or life for you involves, you're not, you're not going to have that fear, trepidation, and unsureness, and uncertainty. Lack of confidence. Oh, who knows what this is going to present? Am I able to? I'm struggling. You spend the time from the start. You hear them out. You hear what the work entails, involves. Just like Daniel and the other three boys in Babylon, when they said the king was going to destroy the wise men, magicians, and all of them with their extra abilities because nobody could tell him his dream and interpretation. Daniel said, leave it with us. Give us a few days, let the king not be in a haste, and we'll consult with our God and come back. And that was what happened. So that initial time, you hear this task, this work is about to kick off. This is what's been presented to you. Fine. You just go in your closet. Even if it's something that you know that you can do, I'm sure that when you seek the Holy Spirit, he will reveal to you even a better, a more better way to do it with his help than if you relied on your experience and that. So please try this out. Let this be a revelation that will result in a lifestyle and will keep coming back with excellent results the first time and indeed be number one in our fields and every area of life. Hallelujah. Do not trust in yourself or in the one that raises the dead, the one that loves us, gave himself for us and wants us indeed to be at the top and not at the bottom. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And have a lovely Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. Catch up soon. Bye for now.